Welcome to another episode of On This Day on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. And today we're going to talk about On This Day, December the 28th, 1975, when the Dallas Cowboys beat the Minnesota Vikings 17-14 to with a Hail Mary pass. Now, the old joke at Buffalo is, do you know what the area code for Buffalo is? Now, this is a joke I heard in the 90s, and it was 044. And the reason... It was 044, of course, was a reference to the city's NFL football team, which went down to defeat in four consecutive Super Bowls from 1991 to 1994. The joke is sardonically funny, but it's also an unfortunate reinforcement of the stigmatization of those who come up just short of first place in the highest levels of athletic competition as failures. Sure, the Buffalo Bills have never won on Super Sunday and thereby established themselves as champions of the NH- NFL. But that shortfall should not be allowed to obscure the Bills' remarkable achievement. Only an extraordinarily talented team could have reached the Super Bowl for four straight years, and nobody but the Buffalo Bills has ever accomplished that feat. Now, if there's a bright side to the Bills' disappointment, is that they have pried the monkey off the back of the Minnesota Vikings. Another extraordinarily talented team who likewise have come up short in four NFL championship games. They were coached by the icily efficient and vastly underrated Bud Grant, who won multiple CFL championships and was known for being a player's coach. Players loved him, and he wasn't one of these coaches that spent 20 hours a day in the office. He was a guy that, on a Saturday morning, I remember interviewing Ed White, who was the great guard for a lot of those Vikings teams, and he said, on Saturday morning, or, you know, Bud Grant went hunting. He'd show up for the walkthrough Saturday afternoon, but he'd been hunting the morning that morning. So football was not an all-encompassing thing for him, which is, I think, what made him such a great coach and leader. Now, they were led by a record-setting quarterback, Fran Tarkington, and anchored by the fearsome uh, defensive line of Carl Eller, Jim Marshall, and Alan Page. The Vikings of the 1970s fought their way to Super Bowl appearances following the 69, 73, 74, and 76 season and just missed the fifth try in 1977 when they fell to the Dallas Cowboys in the NFC Conference Finals 23-6. One of the reasons that happened was Bob Lee replaced an injured Fran Tarkington for that playoff game. And if you remember, that was the team that won the infamous Mud Bowl in 1977 at the L.A. Memorial Coliseum. And the Rams had had a history of coming up short in Minnesota in championship games, which is one of the reasons why the Vikings advanced to so many Super Bowls. And the one time they get the game in L.A., L.A.'s pumped up because they're going to get to play in nice weather instead of freezing cold. And the next thing you know, you get a foot of rain during the game at the L.A. Memorial Coliseum. And the difference in that game was Chuck Foreman running the ball, and the Vikings ended up prevailing 14-7, to but would go on to lose 23-6 to to Dallas in the NFC Championship game the very next week. But... The big thing is this, 1975. Now, if ever a Vikings team was fated to be the NFL champions, 1975 was the year. Minnesota won its first 10 games, finished their schedule with a 12-2 record, and boasted the number one defense in the NFL while outscoring their collective opponents by more than a 2-1 margin at 377-180. to Their divisional playoff challenger that year, and his game scheduled for December 28, 1975, was the Dallas Cowboys, led by the great coach Tom Landry. But the Cowboys were a 10-4 team with 12 rookies on their 43-man roster. They were facing a Vikings unit with much more experience and the home field advantage. The Vikings were a 7-point favorite to win this game. But a tough Dallas defense held them to just a single touchdown, and Dallas actually led Minnesota 10-7 well into the fourth quarter. Minnesota then mounted a 70-yard touchdown drive that put them ahead 14-10 with a little over five minutes left in the game. What happened in the closing seconds of that contest is something most Viking fans wish they could blot from memory. Dallas was facing a 4th-16 situation from their own 25-yard line with 44 seconds left to go. If the Cowboys failed to gain at least 16 yards for a first down in the next play, the ball would go to Minnesota, who would simply run out the clock to win the game. Now, what I'm about to read to you is the very next day, the Minneapolis Star Tribune described the ensuing play. And what they said was, 
Oh, with the purple faithful, we're sure would be the Cowboys' final gasp. Dallas Cowboy quarterback Roger Stallback gunned the ball towards the right sideline. Wide receiver Drew Pearson went up at midfield, caught the ball, and came out of bounds. The official on the scene, Jerry Bergman, ruled the nudge. The nudge on Pearson that Pearson had received from Minnesota Vikings cornerback Nate Wright took him out of bounds. The Vikings protested, but it was a first down for the Dolphins. Now, if you remember, the rule was back in the day, if you were forced out before you get to two feet in and the referee or the official thought that your feet would have come down if you weren't pushed, then you were giving that foot down. And when you watch this play, I don't think there's any doubt that the Vikings got screwed here. And worse was yet to come, though. With the clock running out, you know, only 24 seconds away from a trip to the conference finals and another shot at the Super Bowl for the Vikings, Roger Stallback cut loose with another bomb to Drew Pearson. This one, a 50-yard touchdown completion ever since known as the Hail Mary Pass. Now, Stallback's desperation toss and Pearson's kind of contortionist catch, the ball wound up lodged snugly between his right elbow and his right hip. Shocked and angered, the Vikings... They argued vehemently that Pearson had been guilty of offensive pass interference because they said he pushed Nate Wright, the defender, out of the way so he could catch the ball. But they lost the argument. Tarkenton and the offense came back on the field after the kickoff, and Tarkenton was sacked twice. Each time the quarterback rose, raced over to the official, and protested lack of an offensive interference call against Pearson. This further incensed the spectators that a barrage of bottles, cans, thermos jugs, and other items came flying from the right field bleachers. Now, there is no doubt that both of those penalties were completely missed. And the pass interference is egregious. The call of inbounds on Pierce's first down catch is egregious. No, I mean, there was no instant replay. So as the Vikings tried to stage a miracle rally with 14 seconds remaining, a whiskey bottle came flying out of the stands and conked field judge Armin Terzian Terzian, in the head. The official lay on the ground for several minutes and while the game was halted as he received medical treatment. Finally, walking off the field under his own power with a large white bandage wrapped around his head, and the guy who threw the bottle was actually later prosecuted for this act, There were no miracles left to be had for Minnesota when play resumed. Though the Vikings failed to score and were eliminated from the playoffs with a 17-14 loss, tight end Stu Voigt said to Minnesota quarterback Tarkington later, it was a nightmare, Fran. It was a nightmare the way it ended for us. Sadly and shockingly enough, that nightmare was not over for Fran Tarkington. As he sat in a trailer in a parking lot of Bloomington's Metropolitan Stadium, commiserating and watching the telecast of another playoff game, he learned on what was already quite possibly the worst day of his professional life that his 63-year-old father, the Reverend Dallas Tarkington Sr., had suffered a heart attack and passed away while watching the Vikings-Cowboys game on TV with his other two sons at home in Savannah, Georgia. Now, a lot of fans since then have determined to find more than coincidence and coincidences. Later, it was concluded the infamous Hail Mary game had actually caused the death of the elder Tarkington. The terrible combination of the Cowboys' last-minute comeback, the controversial officiating on key plays, the specter of a referee's being hit in the head with a bottle on national TV, and yet another crushing defeat for his son's team had they assumed induced Dallas Tarkington's heart heart attack. But this is just not true. If nothing else, at least Fran Tarkington had the consolation of knowing that nothing about that fateful game had anything to do with the untimely demise of his father. Dallas Tarkington Sr., it seems, was stricken during the third quarter before the Hail Mary pass, before the controversy over lack of an offensive pass interference call, before the bottle-throwing incident, before the Vikings' final defeat and he died without regaining consciousness. He never saw the end of the game. Now, perhaps as a sports writer suggested at the time, in an odd sort of way, God was looking out for one of his ministers that day by calling him home a little early. So when people tell you that, you know, he died of a heart attack because of the officiating, it's simply not true.
But I could also tell you this. If you look back at the highlights of the game, and he would have, it would have been completely understandable. So this has been Mike Goodpaster on On This Day, December 28th, 1975. The Cowboys, Hail Mary, upsets the Minnesota Vikings at Bloomington's Metropolitan Stadium. And the Cowboys move on to win the game 17-14. to The next week, the Cowboys went to L.A. and beat the Rams 37-7 to as underdogs. But they would come up short as the first wildcard team to make the Super Bowl when they were beaten 21-17 to by the Steel Curtain and the Pittsburgh Steelers, led by legendary coach Chuck Knoll. All right, guys, you can hear us every day on this day on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. Make sure you follow us at Grueling Truth. You can hear all of our shows on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, iTunes, TuneIn, Spotify, wherever you find sports podcasts, you'll find the Grueling Truth. So for now, I'm Mike Goodpaster. You've been listening to the Grueling Truth where the legends speak.